Hi everyone, and as per the title, welcome to my first year on YouTube. It has been interesting and hard to believe that one year has flown by. The purpose of this video is threefold. Firstly, to explain how I started my channel. Secondly, to inspire others who may be thinking of starting a channel or for those who have already started their channel. Thirdly, to share my experience over the last year, which may help others. I have been watching YouTube channels for a long time especially prior to purchasing any items or to gain valuable information. Then one day during lockdown, after I finished my full-time job, I had a eureka moment and thought, why not set up my own channel, which is exactly what I did, posting my first video exactly a year ago when this video was published. I also thought making videos was pretty simple. Well, I learned very quickly that is not the case. And I have to give a lot of credit to all the content creators out there. I did not consult family or friends before starting my channel. I just went ahead and did it. After all, I am not making content for family or friends. You should start your channel with no strategy. Just pick your subject area, get your smartphone or camera out and start filming the highest quality videos as often as you can. That could be every day, once a week, twice a week, once a month, etc. Also remember, when you start your channel, it is unlikely you'll be unique as your topic will have been covered many times over. Look at other videos on your topic to get started and to be a little bit different. Some videos that you publish will not perform as well as others. And there is no magic formula how your videos will perform. You will go through periods where you are pushing out video after video and not getting the desired viewing figures. This can lead to frustration and you thinking of quitting. But I would suggest not to. In my case, I would make videos after videos which were not getting the desired viewing figures, especially after putting so much effort into every one of them. But at no point did I think of quitting. Did it drive me mad? You bet it drove me mad. For inspiration, I would watch videos on how others started their channel and how they dealt with the tough times. Also, it takes time to get established and noticed on YouTube. It is tough to strike gold in the first year, so please do not think about quitting. Maybe take a break and come back with more drive. At this point, you will see my channel is not a roaring success. Also, if I did quit, I would never know how far my channel would grow and I would not have the viewing figures I currently have. Again, when you look at those at the top of the tree on YouTube, they started just like us, but had they quit when the game was tough, they would not be where they are today. I would also compare it to studying for my driving license years ago. There were days when it was tough and burning a hole in my pocket, but I kept going until I passed my driving test. That's the first attempt, which shocked me. Trust me, even if I passed at the second, third or subsequent attempt, I would have still been over the moon. I am a tiny channel, so I do not have any illusions of grandeur when it comes to my viewing figures or subscribers. But I am hoping with time, effort, patience, and a good slice of luck, I can carve out a little niche on YouTube with my channel. Just to give you a snapshot of my progress in the first year on being on YouTube, I have made around 68 videos, excluding this one, gained 81 subscribers from zero and lost some along the way. I have had over 14,000 views, which is a mind blown figure when I stop and think about it for my level. My figures should not be used as a barometer for your channel because yours may grow quicker or slower than mine. Initially, I set myself a target of making 52 videos a year, which equates to an average of one video a week. So to make 68 videos exceeded my expectation. I plan to stick to making 52 videos for the following year. So we will see how things go. You do not need the best equipment to start your channel equally you could have the best equipment and setup, but if your content is lacking, people will just turn away. All you need to do is to get your smartphone out and start filming. As your channel grows, then with time, you can begin to invest in better equipment. Of course, this will depend on your budget. The cameras in your smartphones nowadays are so good that you can just start filming from the get go. I started filming my earlier videos with the Oppo Reno 2Z smartphone, which you may be able to tell from the grainy and ghosty images, poor sound quality, etc., which at the time was the best I could make. I then upgraded to using the Canon PowerShot SX740 digital camera 
and the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra 5G smartphone, which both offer better video and sound quality by shooting in 4K. They are also both good because I can just point and shoot, which is ideal when I'm out on location. If my channel was to grow further, then I would think of investing in better equipment like a DSLR camera. But right now, I am happy with my current equipment. What I have discovered is that YouTube is hard work with many challenges, some of which I will highlight later. You can get over these challenges if your channel is on a topic that you are passionate about, meaning you are happy to go that extra mile when things get tough. What I love about making content for YouTube is that you are your own boss, so you get to call the shots on everything. I have learned so many things being a content creator that it will be too exhaustive to go through everything, but I will go over some of them. To save time, it is good to have an idea how you will shoot each scene for your video. If not, you will be presented with unforeseen challenges which can lead to lengthy reshoots and trust me, I have been there. This takes up a large proportion of my time as I prepare, rehearse, amend, rehearse and amend until I finally get it right before finally delivering to camera. Videos are not made on a whim as my scripts provide salient points which I want to deliver to your audience. Even with this video, I had to prepare a script which took weeks to put together. But as you watch, everything seems so seamless. This area is so underrated and an important aspect as I deliver data and information which must be accurate. Therefore, I try to make sure my sources of information are reliable. I cannot stress how important thumbnails are because it will be the first thing people will see when they browse through YouTube. As human beings, we are very visual. So remember, you may have the best videos, but if you do not make thumbnails, your videos will not attract audiences, thus hindering your viewing figures. Remember, you will never get a second chance to make a first impression. Think of it like a first date. You make the most effort to impress on that first date. I learned the hard way by not making thumbnails from the start, but once I learned about the importance of thumbnails, I had to go back and create them for my first 15 videos, which was a headache. Since then, you can bet your life I create thumbnails with every video I publish, and I try to make them captivating, as you only have a split second to grab someone's attention. Shooting out on location does present challenges such as retakes, people, animals, noise, unpredictable weather, etc. On one occasion, I traveled 106 miles round trip to shoot on location, only for the British weather to ruin it for the whole day, meaning I ended up getting no footage and I was out of pocket. Again, proof content creating is not easy. If you're enjoying this video, a subscribe to the channel below would be anniversary and it is free to do as my analytics are showing only 0.2% of you are subscribed to the channel. Also, by clicking on the notification bell, you do not miss out on upcoming videos. This is another important aspect when shooting videos and it applies to all content creators, regardless of the subject areas chosen. I've invested in a few inexpensive ring lights for indoor filming. Even as you watch this video, I have a couple in front of me, which you cannot see. When outside, I try to use the best natural lighting conditions. If you're on a budget and cannot afford a ring light, then try and make use of the natural light available to you. This can be tough when the weather is temperamental and I can speak from experience. The amount of times I have been outside waiting for the sun to come out from behind the clouds or the time wasted waiting for the wind to die down so the microphone on my equipment does not pick up the whistling sound. I have used various free editing apps which have been helpful in adding the finishing touches to my videos. As I've developed my channel, I am noticing I want more from my editing apps, so I will be looking at better paid apps, but my advice is to start with free editing apps, of which there are many, regardless of whether you are using Android or iOS. These range from Kinemaster, VN Editor, InShot, Filmmaker, Splice, iMovie, etc., which can all be used on your smartphone. Regardless what your channel is about, 
Sound is another important element in any video and I've had comments about the sound quality of my early videos. Yes, they were poor. I took these comments on board and from my video history, you can see I tried a few microphones before getting the sound levels right. Even today, I still focus on the audio quality on my videos. My advice is not to ignore this area because poor sound quality can lead to viewers switching off from watching your videos. Patience is needed in abundance in all areas. For instance, when I shoot my indoor scenes at home, I have two very close neighbors who both have dogs and 80% of the time when I'm filming, one of the dogs will bark loudly, which disrupts my rhythm, leading to retakes upon retakes and makes my blood boil with a few expletives thrown around. This area should come with a government health warning because the moment you post anything on social media platforms, do prepare yourself for some unsavory comments. So you do need to be thick skinned or your journey on YouTube will be short lived. Having a YouTube channel should be a good, fun and liberating experience. I believe in constructive criticism, which can help improve one's channel, but outright rudeness is not acceptable. I'm of the opinion, if someone does not have anything constructive to say, they should remain tight-lipped. But unfortunately, we live in a world where manners and respect are in short supply. YouTube has recently helped in this area by removing the dislike button count, which now looks like this. Apparently, it is an attempt to promote respectful interactions between creators and viewers. This may help to know you cannot receive any negative dislikes, although it does not prevent people leaving negative comments on your channel. One merit for having the dislike count button is that at a glance, you can tell whether a video is worth watching or not. For instance, if the like button count is greater than the dislike button count, the chances are you will watch a video. Conversely, if the dislike button count is greater than the like button count, there is a high chance you will skip that video and save your time. On a good note, I get immense satisfaction when I receive feedback on a video I have made, which has helped influence people's purchasing decisions or has solved the problem. That intrinsic value makes all the effort worthwhile because as I've highlighted, there are many different components that go into making a video. I'm also beginning to understand the power videos have on people and it should be a good source of information and a respected platform. I have heard that one should make videos that your audience wants to watch, which makes sense in theory, but in practice, it could prove tricky depending on the subject area chosen. Take my channel where I want to review mobile phones and tech products. Unfortunately, I do not have deep pockets to be purchasing the latest and greatest products. So I have to adapt my channel by reviewing items I have at home, conducting tutorials, purchasing cheap products that very few people are interested in. I do purchase the old smartphone here and there. Even then, I have to wait a year or more after release when the price is lower. And of course, by then people have moved on to the latest tech products. So I'm always playing catch up. This is proof you cannot just make videos your audience want. Even those at the top of their game on YouTube started with very little or with no budget. On the flip side, with the videos I have made over the first year, I have acquired different filming techniques, which will put me in good stead if I'm ever in a position to review the latest and greatest tech products. So you could argue I'm doing my apprenticeship at the moment and I still have so much to learn. I hope the topics covered in this video have given you an insight into my first year on YouTube and it is meant to inspire because content creating is not easy but do not be put off as it can be rewarding. So get out there and give it a go. In terms of the future for my channel, I want to keep improving and seeing where that takes me. I can honestly say I have no regrets starting my channel and thanks largely to lockdown. Otherwise, I may not have started. If you have any questions regarding any topics covered in this video or anything I have not covered, then please feel free to raise them in the comment section below. 
and I will be more than happy to respond. Well, that wraps up my first year. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in another episode. Oh, yeah.